Let's have a conversation about HDR mode on pro displays. This is Artist Right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. This HDR conversation will focus on creative pro displays such as BenQ, SW, and PD line. For example, I'll be using the SW271C. This is their 27 inch 4K hardware calibrate display to do this demo. If you look inside the display color mode menu, you will notice that there is an HDR color mode, especially on the newer release display. Sometimes you can go in and choose those HDR mode right away. Sometimes they are grayed out. When the HDR mode is grayed out, that means that the HDR is now a function of your computer operating system, and this applies to both Mac and PC. If you're running on a PC, well, it's a little bit smarter about HDR and it will apply HDR when you have HDR appropriate content. I think part of it is because Windows doesn't do any color management from the operating system itself, so it doesn't really apply it until there is a source that has an HDR and Windows can delegate that appropriately. On a Mac operating system, if you are running on a Mac with OS Catalina 10.15.4 or later, this includes Big Sur as well, the first time you plug in a display that's capable of HDR, well, Mac would automatically go in and enable HDR for you. The problem with HDR is this. You take a general graphic user interface such as Lightroom and the picture that I have here that looks really vibrant, has really great colors. And if we enable HDR on this, you will see right away that, well, the interface and everything look washed out. The colors just look much lighter and it doesn't look good anymore. So here's the thing. The reason why this is happening is because our program that we're using everything in our computer operating system is coded. The graphic full user interface, the GUI, is made for standard dynamic range display. None of these are really ever coded for high dynamic range. And until the operating system goes in and really code all these graphical user interface and HDR, we'll never really be able to get good HDR pretty much right directly out of our computer. So you may wonder, well, okay, HDR. So if you're trying to do a calibration, should you enable or disable HDR? I already made so many videos on this and the recommendation is to disable HDR, especially on a hardware calibrate display, such as the BenQ SW line, because if you don't disable HDR, your validation will fail every single time. This is again, because the interface is still in standard dynamic range and the programs are not really coded or designed to measure Rec 2020 color space. Now with that out of the way, you may wonder what about software calibrated displays such as BenQ PD line? That would be the same thing. Although with that display, you would be using the calibration device software to run the calibration on your display. You can certainly try to calibrate in HDR mode and you will go through the process. It will pass most of the time and you can still do a validation if you use a Calibrite, for example, Calibrite Display Pro or Calibrite Display Plus, you can certainly do that and validate the calibration. But again, that's not going to give you an accurate color or an accurate result by any means. So if you're doing color critical work on these pro displays, the best thing that you can do is to disable HDR before you start any calibration process. All right, now with that in mind, you may wonder what this HDR mode is really for. In a very remote sense, you can use this HDR mode for content creation. But first, let's talk about this HDR mode as is applied to content consumption, which is the easiest thing to really think about and to use it for. So the thing about content consumption is this. You can enable HDR mode, and when you do that, you can certainly stream your movies in HDR, you can see things in HDR, you can game in HDR, although if you want to really game, if you're a casual gamer, running it on a 60 hertz display is okay, but if you're somewhat serious, you may want to get a higher refresh rate display that is created specifically for gaming, and that may be the better thing for you to do. For streaming videos, for the most part, you can do that, but the experience will vary largely depending on the platform and how that HDR is really encoded. So before we even talk any more about HDR, let's talk about why HDR on the display is really created for. So a lot of times, the best way to think about HDR is movies, right? So if we take a look at a movie and the way how the movie has been encoded in HDR and everything, when they do the mastering of these movies, they would do it on displays that can go to as bright as 2000 nits. These are $40,000 display that we do not generally have in our studio. So when we bring these content to view on our displays that may go up to 350 or 400 nits, 
something got to happen. We have to figure out a way how to scale those different brightness down. And the different way how this scales comes down to the different HDR format. There are about a handful of them on the market today. Number one being HDR10, which is kind of like the most common man HDR that anybody can access to. There's HLG, Hybrid Log Gamma, that's created by BBC and NHK for broadcasting. And then there's also Dolby Atmos, that is HDR. So there's a lot of different HDR format out there. And there's also an emerging one called HDR10+. Plus. So as you can see, depending on the way how your content is encoded and what HDR format, you may not have a good experience trying to play back HDR content on your display. For example, this SW271C supports two HDR format, that is HDR10 and HLG. So again, depending on the platform that you use to do streaming, this experience can vary largely. Now, beyond this, let's talk about content creation because the term HDR, high dynamic range, is used really interchangeably for all type of creative discipline. Specifically, I want to focus on two discipline. One of them is photography and the other one is for video pros or video work. So in photography and HDR, what we think about them is high dynamic range image, which does happen. So if you are a person that use a big camera, a mirrorless a DSLR, for instance, you'll be taking multiple frames with different exposure and you'll be layering all together to create a 32 bit image that you can go in and pull different tonal back. That is pretty much a high dynamic range image. If you have a smartphone nowadays, guess what? The phone just does it automatically for you and it pretty much compresses out and it looks really fantastic, really fast, right? That's really awesome. So if you are a photographer, does having an HDR display linked to your computer operating system at this point of time mean anything at all? Well, not so much because as you found out, I could have this picture in HDR and I could go in and enable HDR mode on the operating system and everything will look washed out and I'm not getting any more tones than I'm getting. And again, it goes back to the fact that everything, the fundamental of our computer operating system and the way how these software are coded right now, the graphical user interface is really designed for standard dynamic range. So until we have something that can support HDR from the ground up, you're not going to gain any benefit from that. So if you're a photographer, just disable HDR, it's not going to make any difference in what you do at all with image editing. All right, now let's talk about the video pros. This gets really tricky because technically a lot of these pro displays HDR function are created for the video pros and you should be able to go in and master your content, for example, on this display in HDR10 and HLG right away. The idea is yes, you should be able to do that. But again, the signal coming out from our computer, even though you have an HDR footage to play back on this display, because all the GUI and everything else, it's still coded in standard dynamic range. It's still going to look wash out and it's a big guessing game with how your content is going to look in HDR at that point. So you may ask, how do you really go in and solve this problem? Well, the one thing that you can do is that you can get an external box made from AJA. And these external box that I'm showing on the display right now is giving you an idea for what you can do. For instance, you can run your laptop and what you would do is you would get these external box, you would route the signal, the Thunderbolt 3 signal coming from your Mac or your PC laptop into this box. And then you would take the HDMI signal out of this box and plug into your display, enable HDR mode. And now you would be able to master your content in HDR. Now, mind you, I said master your content, meaning that you can view your content that was captured in HDR and play it back in HDR. However, the best thing to do is to do a full screen playback because the graphical user interface is still going to be for standard dynamic range. So you're gonna now be using this in a dual screen mode where you're doing a timeline edit on your built-in display or on another display. And then on the one that's capable of HDR with the properly rounded signal, you'll be using that to pretty much view your HDR content. And that would be the way how you would go in and master your content in HDR for any creative video pros. Now, here's the thing. There are some out there that are doing HDR video, but for majority of the people that I meet, if you're just filming an event, if you're filming, for example, a, an ad for someone, for a majority of the contents that are being created today, unless you're in Hollywood, none of them are really being truly mastered in HDR at this moment in time, at least from what I see anyway. 
So if you're a Creative Pro that does color critical work on your display, the best thing that you can do right now for all creative discipline is to go in and disable HDR. Now, if you happen to be a video creative pro, have an AJA box or figure out a way how to get around this HDR mastering system for these display and be able to use that function, more power to you. But for majority of us, disabling HDR function is going to be the best thing we could do for our color management and color critical workflow. I hope that you find this conversation about HDR helpful and also educational. If you have any questions about this or comments, leave them below. Give this a like. Subscribe and hit on the bell if you're new. And remember, in art we trust.